Welcome back to water quality in the Pacific Northwest. Um, soils uh, 405, 505, water resources 405, 505. Today we're going to continue with our series of lectures on surface water quality. Again, we're taking a look at pollutants and measurements. Uh, if you take a look at our sequence where we are right now, uh, we have covered nutrients, sediments, erosion on land. We spent two lectures on the process of eutrophication, and today we're going to concentrate on temperature. Temperature is a measurement of surface water quality. Sur temperature definitely does impact surface water. Okay, so let's just take a look at some basics on temperature. Uh, some things that you should be aware of as we talk about uh, water quality. Temperature is an important aspect of water quality. Oftentimes, many people overlook temperature. However, it has a major impact on several components of water quality. These include the dissolved oxygen content of water. The solubility of oxygen decreases as water temperature increases. Thus, uh, the cooler the water is, the more oxygen it can hold. If water gets too warm, there's less oxygen, and with less oxygen, you have more stress on the aquatic life in these bodies of water. In addition to affecting dissolved oxygen levels, temperature is known to affect several biological processes within water. For instance, temperature affects the rate of metabolism, uh, temperature impacts the rate of, my, of aquatic growth, and it also affects the reproductive processes. So it has many, uh, many functions or many things that temperature does affect. In addition, we know that temperature affects many chemical processes. And when we talk about chemical processes, we're simply talking about the solubility <coughs> excuse me, and reaction rates of chemicals in water. The rate of chemical re reactions increases with increasing temperature. Temperature also has an impact on the composition of species within the ecosystem. We know that many aquatic species can survive only within a lim limited temperature regime. Thus, if the temperature of the water becomes too warm, we might see the disappearance of certain species. Also, temperature affects the density of water and the stratification of water layers within a stream or a water body. For instance, we know that water is most dense at 4 degrees um, centigrade. Uh, we see differences in den density, and uh, this leads to temperature stratification within the water body. And then finally, we know that temperature affects environmental cues for life history stages. Simply put, changes in temperature may act as signals for insects, aquatic insects to emerge, for fish to spawn, uh, for things like that. So let's go back and look at a few of these uh, temperature impacts in a little bit more detail. Let's start with the dissolved oxygen levels. We know that basically at sea level, water can hold between 8 and 15 milligrams of dissolved oxygen per liter of water. Uh, this ranges from a low of um, 8 milligrams per liter at 0 degrees centigrade and at 15, uh, at 15 milligrams per liter at 30 degrees. Actually, I have these reversed. I'm sorry. 15 milligrams per liter at 0 degrees centigrade and 8 milligrams per liter at 30 degrees centigrade. Consequently, under high temperatures, we can get lower oxygen levels, which means it's hard for the aquatic organisms to get more oxygen. In the Pacific Northwest, uh, people traditionally relate high temperatures to a reduction in fish production. 
But now we also have to consider things like fish health. Higher temperatures, less oxygen, more difficult for uh, fish to breathe and take care of the processes and do the processes that they do. Uh, dissol dissolved oxygen levels can also be reduced to very low levels when water is trapped under ice in the winter. Uh, in areas where we have really cold winters and we get ice formed on top of water bodies, um, there's very little introduction of oxygen from the atmosphere so that the oxygen in the water that's under the ice uh, is very low and that can have a neg negative effect on the aquatic organisms. So again, temperature is really important on, on uh, dissolved oxygen levels. Again, the warmer the water it is, the water is, the less dissolved oxygen it generally holds. If we look at biological processes in water, temperature affects, again, the metabolism, growth, and reproduction of fish in the region stream and other aquatic organisms in the region stream. So stream temperature from a biological process standpoint is important because cold water fish, fish that are native to colder waters such as salmon and trout here in the Pacific Northwest, they need cold waters for optimum health. If for some reason our streams are warmer than traditional, we're going to have trouble with spawning. Data has shown that when temperatures of the water are above optimum values, the fish are often stressed and are more likely to get things uh, that hurt their life cycle. Uh, they're more likely to get fungal infections and they're more likely to not get enough oxygen for optimum growth and optimum function. So stream temperature is important. If we take a look at thermal stress, again, in addition to fungal problems and lack of dissolved oxygen, uh, thermal stress may also make fish more susceptible to toxic substances that could be in the water. With the salmonid species, uh, temperatures above 78 degrees Fahrenheit in the water may cause the salmon to die. And if we go back to the theme of dissolved oxygen, cold waters hold more oxygen. As temperatures increase, oxygen levels decrease. Warm water basically can cause fish to need more oxygen also. Uh, st uh, growth stage studies have shown that when the water is warmer, uh, fish actually need more oxygen. So there's a double-edged sword there. In addition to the life cycle of our, our trout and our salmonids, stream temperature is important. Uh, if you look at, we go to cold water. Cold waters provide the following advantage. Cold waters slow the growth of bacteria in water. They also slow the growth of algae in water. And both of these things can be detrimental to the fish. Now, what are the causes of uh, elevated stream temperature? Uh, they're pretty easy and uh, obvious. Of course, today, in today's uh, situation, we talk about climate change. We know that areas of the planet are getting warmer. If areas of the planet get warmer, we're probably going to see our streams get a little bit warmer. That's going to put some stress on the fish. But probably the main reason uh, why elevated stream temperatures are occurring is because of the removal of the vegetation along stream banks, the removal of what we call riparian vegetation by humans. We remove uh, shrubs, we remove trees along steam, stream banks for convenience. Uh, natural and human-caused fires remove vegetation that shades streams, and so does floods. Spring floods can wash out a lot of the uh, riparian vegetation. In addition to that, when we have floods, uh, you've got a lot of water moving through a stream channel, and 
that moves sediment around. Sediment from the land, sediment from the streams itself, excessive sedimentation in stream channels can reduce the amount of water in the stream channels. Now, the stream channels can't carry as much water. And when there's less water and you've got the sun beating down, that water warms faster and you result in higher stream temperatures. Also, uh, many of our streams are connected to urban areas. And in urban areas, people get rid of their wastewater uh, by the wastewater going down into sewers to wastewater treatment plants. The wastewater treatment plants treat our wastewater, and eventually that wastewater actually is sent back to streams after it's cleaned up and the pathogens are killed. And oftentimes that wastewater, because it's been through the human system is actually warmer than the streams themselves. And in some communities, particularly in the West, the wastewater stream coming out of wastewater treatment plants is actually larger than the water stream from the natural streams. So you start adding uh, this artificial water and it also increases the stream temperature, which can make aquatic habitats more difficult. And of course, we've already talked about removal of spring bank, a spring bank or riparian vegetation. It's currently the major cause of elevated temperatures in streams. Within Idaho, uh, we have an environmental agency called the Idaho Department of Environmental Quality, and it has water temperature criteria that are designed to protect aquatic life and aquatic uses in streams. The Idaho Department of Environmental Quality has set temperature guidelines for waters that are typically warm, for waters that are seasonally cold, for cold water, for salmon spawning, and for bull trout, which is an endangered species in the state. So we do have some metrics uh, to look at. And let's take a look at some of these metrics. DEQ, through their research and research by EPA, have shown that maximum daily maximum temperatures in warm waters, naturally warm waters, should not exceed 91 degrees Fahrenheit. Streams that have seasonal cold water should not exceed 79 degrees Fahrenheit. Cold water streams should not exceed 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, solid spa spawning streams should not exceed 55 degrees Fahrenheit. We don't have a maximum uh, daily maximum temperature recommendation for bull trout right now. But basically what DEQ is saying, when maximum daily temperatures exceed these values, we're going to put some stress on aquatic ecosystems. Now, the maximum daily temperatures are probably not as important as the maximum daily average temperatures, which produce a different set of metrics. Warm water streams should not exceed, warm water and lakes should not exceed 84 degrees Fahrenheit. Seasonal cold water shouldn't exceed 73 degrees Fahrenheit. Cold water streams shouldn't exceed 66. Uh, solid spawning streams should not exceed 48 degrees Fahrenheit. And again, we don't have a metric for bull trout. So these values tell us that if we have maximum daily average temperatures exceeding these values, we're going to put a pretty much stress on these aquatic ecosystems. Most of the reason we get temperatures exceeding these values well, you can, you can look back at some of those things we talked about a little bit earlier. Obviously, when you remove vegetation that shades the stream, temperatures are going to be warmer. When you have streams that are not as deep as they used to be because of sedimentation, the water warms up faster. So there's a lot of reasons why there is concern about increasing temperatures in our stream and rightfully so, temperatures are considered, temperature is considered a pollutant when it's too high in our streams. Some of the other 
uh, water temperature factors uh, would include chemical processes, which we're not going into depth in this course about, but basically uh, to recall the rate of chemical reactions in water increases with increasing temperature. And chemical processes, uh, when we increase temperature, affect the solubility and reaction rates of chemicals. So, so far in this temperature unit, dissolved oxygen levels have become uh, very important and temperature levels in streams have become very important. Another process that we need to think about is the species composition of the ecosystem. We know that many aquatic species can only survive within a limited temperature range. If the stream gets too warm, you may lose that species. And that's something we always need to be, be aware of. If the temperature of the stream is too cool, we don't necessarily lose the species. We basically have a delayed reaction where the species is not active until a little bit later in the year. Water density and stratification. If the water is not rapidly flowing, very slow flowing water body, or a, a, even a lake water body, uh, we do have to worry about water density and stratification. Water, again, is most dense at 4 degrees centigrade. And with these flow, fl slow flowing water bodies, we do see some stratification. We see differences in density and temperature, and that leads to stratification of the water body. I have a graphic here that kind of demonstrates this. Uh, here, if we take a look at this water body, and we take a look at the mixed surface layer of the water body, and the upper water mass, and again, here's a deep water mass. Uh, if we blow up the mixed surface layer, we can see how we see different layers, uh, different types of stratification. Uh, so in the summer, we get this type of stratification here on the left. In the fall, the stratification is, a, is actually a little bit more stratified. We have four layers. In winter, we basically have a mixed layer and a second layer. And in the spring, when things start warming up, we, we have four layers of stratification. And again, when we have stratification, you have processes that are more or less confined to certain areas of the water body. So we always have to consider uh, that there could be stratification, more likely to be stratification, uh, basically in the fall and the spring. So if you're ever doing any uh, sampling work in a water body, you need to be aware that there is stratification even in the surface layer of your water body. So the last thing that I think that is important to talk about when we talk about temperature, um, temperature basically is an environmental cue for life history stages, for life cycles of different organisms in the water. And we'll briefly talk about two types of organisms. So, so basically, changes in temperature may act as signals for insects to emerge or for fish to spawn. So temperature is really important. So I like to call these environmental cues. Let's take a look at a uh, two examples quickly. Uh, we may have spawning triggers. Uh, temperature change may be a spawning trigger in fish. For instance, um, with catfish, this lovely catfish right here, uh, a sudden decrease in water temperature often triggers spawning. Particularly in warm climates in the eastern United States, a big temperature decrease usually occurs when we've had major thunderstorms or some flooding, and that may be the trigger for spawning. So the catfish, a sudden decrease in water temperature, may trigger spawning. Um, people that study these things have shown that they can get fish to breed by simply changing water temperatures. We have certain sp uh, fish species that if we raise the water temperature, uh, we can get them to breed.
other species that if we lower the water temperature, we can get them to breed. And uh, this is important when we talk about hatcheries, uh, basically artificial fish production. We know that temperature can, can serve as a cue that it's time to breed. So we need to understand temperature regimes in water bodies to protect this. In addition to spawning, another environmental cue that we need to talk about are the insects. The benthic macroinvertebrates in our water bodies. Remember, benthic macroinvertebrates are food for fish. Temperature change may be an aquatic insect trigger, emergence trigger. It gets warmer, you have certain insects that will emerge from their larval stage uh, into their full-flung stages where they're tasty treats for fish. Uh, things like may mayflies. When the temperature increases, mayflies come out and you see big hatches and all of a sudden you've got plenty of food for the fish. Temperature change may be an aquatic insect emergence trigger. Uh, there have been a lot of studies that have been published. Um, just to use one example, um, in Colorado, the emergence date of the mayfly population uh, was predicted in streams by temperature changes. By going out and measuring temperature and using long-term historical data, they could predict when the, when the mayfly hatch would be. We know that if it's warmer, earlier than normal, the mayflies emerge sooner in warm water. Mayflies aren't unique. We have all sorts of benthic macroinvertebrates. We have stoneflies, caddisflies, dragonflies, mayflies. Bees, insects, have temperature triggers. As temperature warms up, they emerge, and then we have a food supply for fish. I'm sure many of you have been in streams uh, in the spring where you've just seen this huge hatch of, hatch of insects. Again, temperature has probably been the major cause of this trigger. And uh, method, uh, benthic macroinvertebrates is our topic we're going to cover next. Um, is really important. Temperature is a dominant emergence trigger in streams with variable water temperature habitats. So looking back on some of the stuff that we've covered in this unit, temperature is really important. It impacts our biological oxygen uh, levels, dissolved oxygen levels in streams. Uh, it impacts environmental cues for benthic macroinvertebrates. Uh, to uh, emerge. Uh, it impacts fish, maybe telling them when it's time to spawn. Um, high temperature levels can reduce spawning, can reduce fish activity. So temperature is something that we need to be aware of. Uh, there's lots of information out there in the scientific literature. Uh, a lot of it is uh, way too technical for this class, but we need to always be, bear in mind that temperature is an environmental issue. It is a form of pollutant when temperature is outside the range that it should be for optimum aquatic life. Thank you for your attention. Is that 